Tova Signature is a very light fragrance. So if you're somebody who's new to fragrance, this might be a great option for you. I always think a newer fragrance should be, ba for people that are kind of fearful, should be based in either musk in the base or um, sandalwood is usually safe. Anything patchouli or even too spicy usually kind of scares people off from fragrance in the beginning. So this would be a good option because the top of this is uh, citrusy and aldehydes. And if you don't know what aldehydes are, it's basically um, what makes a fragrance smell kind of soapy, if that makes any sense. Um, we're going to, thank you. We're going to do this real quick. Hold on. Is it, and it's powering. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Um, so if you, if you're, if you don't know like what you want a fragrance, but you don't know what to get, I would try something a little bit lighter. That's why I generally recommend Calvin Klein fragrances to a lot of people because they're very citrusy. Um, but this particular one definitely has a base of uh, sandalwood and musk really comes through. And when I say musk, I've talked about this before, not musky, musty, like not like an underarm or a groin smell or something like that. No, 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 no. Musk is a, is a different smell when it comes to fragrance. And, and listen, there's time for musk from someone's groin, of course. Um, but when you want, you know, a bottled fragrance, uh, it's a good base for something light. In the middle of this fragrance is jasmine and, um, what, what's in here? Jasmine. Not really carnation, but there's definitely jasmine in the middle of this. There, there, there's something else in there, um, but it's not strong floral. Do you see what I'm saying? It's more, um, it's, it's soapy in a way. It, it's a bit, uh, it's not like, it, it reminds it reminds you of a bar of soap in a way. I mean, I hate to say it. Uh, I like it personally. It's not my normal fragrance profile, of course. You know, I like something spicy, very woodsy, heavy, um, but I love this. And of course I was gonna love it anyway because it was Tova Borgnine, so I was going to be in love with it no matter what it was. But Tova Signature, you can check that out. She sells on QVC and stuff like that. So um, uh, I think just QVC, but maybe there's, maybe she sells somewhere else. But Morgan gave that to me for my birthday because she knows, oh my gosh, she, she even bought me this book, to, a Tova Borgnine book, which uh, I should, I should come on and read it sometime. It's, it's, it's so cool. Thank you, by the way, for the badges. That's so sweet. Um, yes, yes, Marilyn Miglin fragrances. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you said that. I love Marilyn Miglin. Absolutely. Hi, Shaney. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Aunt. Hi, Gregory. Um, thank you, Scott. Yeah, the bottle is beautiful, right? Very simple, clean. This is a this is a nice size as well. And this is the Eau du Parfum. So it's a little, it, it's going to last, it's going to last a little less. Uh, but you know, that's the thing about, um, Yes, Moni's right. It is an it is an older fragrance is what you're going to get from this. Uh, definitely not a modern fragrance. I wouldn't say like if you if you were to smell this in a department store, you would definitely thank you, Tommy. Uh, oh my gosh, ten of you have bought badges. That is so sweet. Hi, Zach Horn. Um, Beatrix, hi baby. Oh my god, thank you, uh, Beatrix, Beatrice, Beatrice, Beatrice Adriana. Yeah, you know, if you like a modern fragrance, something young or something that is like uh, creamy, that's not this. That's not this. This is soapy. This, it, it really does smell like money, you know? And in a way, I guess I could say to someone, like if someone said, oh, is it sexy? It's not sexy. This is not a sexy fragrance for me. Um, it is not a heady fragrance. It's not spicy. It is definitely very clean, very safe, very... Um, it smells like money, you know? It smells like, ri it smells like rich white people money. That's what it smells like. And that's who made it. So, you know, get into it. Get into it if that's what you like. I have a, I have a, I have a time. Thank you, David Rios. Hi. I have a time and a place for everything. David, right now we're talking about Signature by Tova. Tova Borgnine. You know how much I love Tova Borgnine. Signature is this fragrance. We're talking about a base in sandalwood musk. There is a little tiny bit of amber in it. A little bit. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. There's a little bit. 
The middle is uh, uh, is definitely lavender in the middle. The top, for sure, aldehydes because it's soapy. It does smell extremely clean and fresh. This is something that I do not have a lot of in my fragrance library. And what I mean by that is the fragrance profile is not one that I have very much of. Um, clearly, this is the only bottle of this I have. But um, this is... Gardenia by Elizabeth Taylor. Now, don't be afraid. Usually when people hear that a fragrance is the name of a flower, they get turned off a little bit. So for some reason, or, or for some people, they'll hear like, oh, I'm wearing Rose uh, by Oscar de la Renta. And they'll go, oh, I don't like, roses smell like a funeral to me. I don't like that. Sometimes you have to give it a chance because for instance, like Rose by Oscar de la Renta or Rose, um, no, it's Rose. Um, it's not an essential oil, okay? So it's not like the full strength thing. That's the same thing with this Gardenia by Elizabeth Taylor. It is a white floral. It's fresh. It, I would say it's, uh, it's crispy. It's green. If that, you know, obviously the bottle's green. Um, but you're, this is like green leaves. This is lily of the valley. Um, orchid, like a crispy orchid. If you've ever been to... A, f a flower shop and you and you smelled the inside of the freezer or the refrigerated refrigerator sort of unit you know that crispiness that you get imagine that as a base and then the um the gardenia is running through that it's very crispy it's beautiful i think it's gonna be something that you would give someone especially around spring into summer because it is extremely, extremely light and beautiful. And I don't mean light that it wears away because it's it's lasting on me. Um, but this is fresh, floral, and green. And you know me, I love really heavy perfumes, musky perfumes, things with clove and frankincense and myrrh. I love all of that. This is beautiful though. This is lovely. This is... Gardenia by Elizabeth Taylor, and it is so right. I love Creed fragrances. I do. I've only, I've never purchased them. I've only been gifted them, and you know Tommy always uh, gifts those. Uh, David Rios mentioned. Um, David Rios. Uh, uh, my, somebody asked about a male uh, fragrance profile. Uh, David uh, bought what was the one? David, the the Louis Vuitton one that you bought me. That is just. I mean, I love wearing it, but it always reminds me of David when I smell it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this smells like David, no matter what. Um, and I love it, but I mean, it, you know, literally the, the bottle is, I'm not buying it. I'm not, I'm not paying that money for it, but you know, I certainly will accept it as a gift, especially when it showed up engraved in gold. I will, shit, yeah, I'm going to take it. <laughs> I'm not crazy. I mean, I'm nuts, but I'm not crazy. Um... My perfume of the night is, um, I, I have other ones of this brand, um, and the other ones, uh, I, I've shared one of them before, and it's called Vanilla 28 by Kaoli, and this is Kaoli uh, Musk 12. Now, here is the thing about the Kaoli fragrances. Um, the Kaoli fragrances are standalone fragrances, but they're also... Uh, intended to be used to layer one another. So Vanilla 28 uh, is very lasting. The thing about the, the about the Kaoli fragrances is they're very linear fragrances, meaning from beginning to end, there is not a lot of change. So you're going to get what you're going to get. In a way, it kind of reminds you of an essential oil in the sense that it, this musk is going to... While there are notes of things in it, it's always going to smell like musk. That musk is in the opening, it is in the heart, it is in the base. Uh, it's not described as that, but it's it's a, essentially a linear fragrance, meaning a fragrance that is not deeply, um, not deeply layered as much as it is. Uh, again, it's not going to change. That so when you hear the term linear, a linear fragrance. But Musk Twelve by Kaoli, which is a Huda Beauty product, they're they're. I will say I believe them to be um, on the pricier end of fragrances. You know, I mean, you can usually there's a lot of fragrances out there that you can get in a three point four ounce size, which is what this bottle is, and you could get a lot of fragrances at a department store for. $60. That's a lot of money. I understand it's not $1, but 
in this sense, these are about $130, which I think is a lot of money um, for, in many ways, fragrances that you can maybe get the same idea from somewhere else. So unless you plan on layering these, um, this particular one is, um, how do I, uh, I'm trying to figure out because my mind is all over the place with this. My best way to describe this is it's definitely, it's like a creamy musk. So there's a lot of vanilla in this. There is a lot of sandalwood in the base of this. There are to a top of a little bit of like freesia, a little bit of, um, what else would be in the top? Like lotus, kind of. Nothing too hard, hard. Well, the freesia is a little hard, but uh, there's not a lot. There's jasmine in the heart of this. You always see a little bit of uh, herbal or floral in the heart of a fragrance. So there is some jasmine in this. But the sandalwood, the musk, and the vanilla really speak, um, um, really speak through this. And when I think of Kaoli 20, Vanilla 28 and I think of this, I can see why those two fragrances would be layered with one another. So meaning you could wear both of them to amplify a little bit of one or the other. So say you wore this and you definitely put a lot of this on and then you put a little bit of the vanilla. It would pick up the vanilla in this and keep it all the way all day long. Or if you did more of the vanilla 28 and a little bit of the musk, it would amplify the musk that is in that one. There's also a citrus and I think there's a rose. I have them. I haven't opened them, but I do have them. Um, and uh, I would definitely say this is a, a creamy musk is good for somebody who uh, is interested in a musk, but but is afraid of that word musk. Because musk sound when you say to someone, oh, my fragrance is musky, it sounds like musty. So they think, oh, it's kind of dark. It reminds me of like earth and mushrooms and, you know, uh, an old cellar. That's not what musk means. I, that, that's a connotation, but that's not what it means. Um, the musk is, 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 is definitely earthy, but it's... Um, you know, there's there's just like a little bit of sandalwood is usually with musk. So if you are afraid of musk, this would be a good option because it's definitely not overpowering and there's a creaminess to it. So I would say, um, I would say this is a good, great option. I like it. I like it. It's nice. I, um, it would not be my go-to for me just because it is mild. This is a mild fragrance. If you're someone who's looking for something that's if you like an amber, there's a bit, there's an amber quality to this, even though there's not really amber in this. There's an amber, a vanilla, a sandalwood, and a musk quality about this. I do like beachy scents, especially in the summertime as we're, oh, hey, lake bed. As we're moving into the spring, like it's starting to warm up a little bit here in Southern California, though it was cold for a while. I, I tend to like to wear lighter fragrances um, just because I feel like when I start to perspire or I start to just feel like overwhelmed with like a sweater or something, um, I feel like anything lighter just agrees with me. It like marries with the, the temperature of my body a little bit better than something that is heavier, what I would consider a fall or a winter fragrance. So, um, yeah, I've talked about before, one of my favorites to wear that I'm still able to get is... Um, Pure Lavender by Ferrari. I love to wear Pure Lavender. It's gorgeous. I used to be able to get it at Ross, but I don't see it as often anymore, so I find it online. Um, my favorite, favorite, favorite of all time, as you know. I can't get, get it anymore because it's they don't make it anymore. You can find it on eBay because it's dead stock. It's like three or $400 a bottle, but it's... Um, uh, chemistry by Clinique. And a lot of people don't like that because like, remember I was talking about the popped collar, people who go skiing, like super clean, um, you know, Caucasian fragrance as, as somebody called it earlier. It's very that. It's very soapy, lavendery fragrance, but I love it. Oh, scent of the night. Well, thank you for asking. Um, scent of the night is a perfume that I don't wear very often, but I do love this fragrance. And the thing about this fragrance is it would probably be classified as a quote, oriental vanilla. I, you know, we talked about that word. I know we don't describe people as oriental, but the fragrance industry still uses the term oriental to describe an item. So, um, this, uh, item would probably, I would say be classified as a quote, oriental vanilla. Although vanilla is not in... Uh, 
it probably is in the layering of this, but I don't really s smell the vanilla jumping out, but I smell what smells like vanilla. And what that is would be in the heart of this fragrance is, um, is there's chocolate, like a white, probably white chocolate, but there's definitely chocolate, kind of like Angel um, would have chocolate. But anyway, this fragrance is um, uh, English Laundry. English Laundry is the name of this fragrance. And uh, definitely chocolate in the heart of this, if not white chocolate. Um, probably a floral, usually like a floral or an herbal is definitely in the uh, in the heart of a fragrance. That's usually what's in that middle area. You'll always hear that. Um, um, in any event, this is English Laundry. Uh, what, so the reason that there, this would be classified as an oriental vanilla is because it definitely has a woodsy base for sure. Um, musk in the base, orris root. Um, the, the vanilla, I mean, sorry, the chocolate marries with the, um, uh, what would I say was in the top? Oh, the, oh, I don't even, I'm skipping like the most important part. Uh, Keens fruit, you know, if you're, if you're not familiar, a, a, a Keens fruit is like, uh, kind of like a pear, I guess you would say. So it's juicy like that. That's definitely in the top of this. That's the invitation uh, note of this. And then that really marries with the chocolate in the middle to create like a vanilla, a vanilla. And of course the musk, all of that. This is interesting because it reminds me of a gourmand fragrance, which is a fragrance that smells like something edible, but it really is technically more like a quote oriental vanilla. And this is English Laundry. English Laundry is the name of this fragrance if you're looking for something like that. Um, and there's a term that I don't really talk uh, use too much just because some of these terms are just I guess, you know, I'm not in the perfume industry. I'm just a, a fan of perfume or fragrance. Um, but there's a term called silage. And basically what that means is how the fragrance lasts in the room when you're in the room. So, you know, the, when people talk, talk about wearability or does it last, the, the that term really is more about does it linger in the room when you leave or when you're around? Do people go, ooh, you smell? That's what that is. And, um, you know, for some fragrances, usually the heavier the base, the the heavier um, uh, or, or the stronger the, it's going to last like that. 